this is Dr. Hana Asil, and this is about trends in the periodic table. So we're talking about trend in the melting point and boiling point of a substance. So what determines the melting point or the boiling point of a substance? That depends on its structure and the strength of intermolecular forces. So if we have a giant structure, it would have high melting point. If it has simple molecular structure, it will have low melting point. Please notice that the trend in melting point is the same as boiling point. So if we say melting point is high, then the boiling point is also high and so on. Okay, so if we look at metals, what determines the melting point of a metal? Well, we know that metals have giant metallic structure. That means regular rows of positive ions surrounded by delocalized electrons. Now, going from sodium to magnesium to aluminium, this is across a period, and sodium is in group 1, magnesium group 2, aluminium group 3. What is happening is we have more and more delocalized electrons per atom. So, sodium is in group 1. Each atom has one outermost delocalized electron per atom. Magnesium has two outermost electrons. Aluminium has three outermost electrons. As we have more and more delocalized electrons, the melting point and boiling point increase going from left to right. So going from sodium, magnesium, aluminium, the boiling point increases. We have to know how to explain why it increases. We said this is because the number of delocalized outer shell electrons in the metallic structure increases going from sodium to magnesium to aluminium. This means increased attraction forces between the negative delocalized electrons and the positive ions. As a result, the boiling point increases and also actually the electrical conductivity would increase. Going to group 4, you should realize that group 4, carbon or silicon, for example, have giant macromolecular structures. So carbon can have giant three-dimensional tetrahedral structure in the form of diamond or giant three-dimensional uh, structure of layers of six-sided rings like graphite. Or silicon can also have giant three-dimensional structure very similar to that of diamond. So all of them have many strong covalent bonds between the atoms in the giant three-dimensional macromolecular structure. And that needs a lot of energy to be broken. So the melting point of group 4 is the highest in the period. Going from group 5 to uh, group 8, these all have low melting point because they all have simple molecular structures with weak attraction forces between molecules. So nitrogen are simple di. Uh, di Atomic molecules, oxygen, fluorine, neon is simple uh, monatomic uh, mo molecules. So all of these have very weak attraction forces between their molecules. And this needs a small amount of energy to be broken. And that is why all of them have very low melting point. Also in the next group, we have, uh, in the next period, sorry, we have phosphorus, sulfur, chlorine, and argon. Again, all of these have simple molecular structures, but notice that phosphorus, the molecule is made up of four atoms. Sulfur, the molecule is made up of eight atoms, and then chlorine is diatomic. So there is a slight rise in uh, melting point from phosphorus to sulfur, but all of them are simple molecular structures with weak attraction forces between the molecules, so they all have low melting points. So looking at a period from left to right, 
lithium, beryllium, boron, carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine, neon. What is happening to the melting point? We said lithium, beryllium, boron are all metallic structures with increasing number of delocalized electrons around the positive ions. The carbon is also a giant three-dimensional uh, structure with many strong covalent bonds that need a lot of energy to be broken. So there is a gradual increase in melting point going from left to right, from group one to group four. But going into group 5, nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine, neon, these are simple molecular structures with weak attraction forces between the molecules, so all of them have low melting points. Again, if we go to period 3, we said we have sodium, magnesium, aluminium, all of them are uh, metallic structures with increasing number of delocalized electrons, so there is a gradual increase in melting point. Silicon in group 4 has giant three-dimensional structure similar to that of diamond, so these are many covalent bonds that need a lot of energy to be broken, so we said the one in group 4 is the one that has the highest melting point in the period. Then moving on to the next groups, phosphorus, sulfur, chlorine, and argon, we said these are simple molecular structures with weak attraction forces between molecules. If we say why there is a slight rise in melting point from phosphorus to sulfur, we said phosphorus is a molecule made up of four atoms, but sulfur is a molecule made up of eight atoms, more electrons in the molecule, so stronger intermolecular forces, which we refer to as van der Waals forces. Chlorine is diatomic, argon is made up of atoms, so all of these have low melting points. Again, if you're looking at any period, we said the one in group 8 is the one that has the lowest melting point. So lithium, beryllium to neon, neon is the one that has lowest melting point. Uh, sodium, magnesium to argon, the argon is the one that has lowest melting point in the period. So let's take a look at this question. It says period 3 of the periodic table from sodium to argon. What is the trend in melting temperatures of the elements? So he's looking at what? Sodium to argon? That's sodium to argon. Now, what is happening to the melting temperatures? We said going from sodium, magnesium, aluminium, silicon, there is a gradual increase with silicon as the highest melting point. Then we go into phosphorus, sulfur, chlorine, argon, simple molecular structures, so the melting point decreases. So my choice actually is D. We have an increase in melting point to silicon and then a decrease in melting point because all the others are uh, simple molecular structures. This question says which of the following graphs not drawn to scale best represents the trend in the melting temperature of the elements across period 3. So again we're looking at period 3, sodium, magnesium, aluminium, silicon. We said this uh, have an increasing melting point due to increase in number of delocalized electrons per atom and we go into group four group four is high and then we go down to simple molecular structures with a lower melting point so my choice is a which of these elements in period three has the highest melting temperature Okay, so what are we looking at? We're looking at sodium, aluminium, silicon, phosphorus. We said which of these would have the highest melting temperature? The one in group 4 is the one that has highest melting point. And if he says why, it's because it's giant covalent structure with many strong covalent bonds that need a lot of energy to be broken. Okay, going down a group, 
what happens to the melting point? Well, that depends. Are we talking about group 1 and 2? So these are metals or are we talking about the non-metals? Because it is different. So if we go down a group in metals, group 1 and group 2, the melting point or boiling point is decreasing as we go down. This is because as we go down in the metals, we said the there is strong attraction force between the delocalized electron and uh, the positive nucleus of each atom. But as we go down, there are more and more shells. So we say that the boiling point decreases as we go down. Why? Because there is increased shielding between positive nucleus and the outer electrons. So there is less attraction force that binds them together, so they will need less energy to be broken. So remember, going down a group, the boiling point or melting point decreases so that the one at the top is the one that has higher melting point or higher boiling point. What if we're going down group 7 or group 8? Now, these are non-metals. So, notice that as we go down, the melting point or boiling point increases. This is because these are simple molecular structures. But as we go down, the molecule becomes larger, more electrons per molecule. So, there will be stronger intermolecular forces which you refer to as van der Waals forces and that means that the one at the bottom would have higher melting point or boiling point so we already know for example that fluorine and chlorine are gases and that means they have low boiling point bromine is a liquid and then iodine and astatine are solids so that means going down group 7 or uh, and 8 or group 0, the larger number of electrons as we go down leads to stronger van der Waals forces between molecules and this needs more energy to be broken. So the boiling point increases going down the group. So the one at the bottom is the one that has higher boiling point. Okay, let's take a look at this question. It says, which of the following series shows the elements in order of increasing melting temperature? So, which of these is increasing melting temperature? Well, let's see. Lithium, sodium, potassium, what is happening as we go down uh, group 1? We said as we go down group 1, we're actually decreasing melting point or boiling point and we said that's because there are more shells so more shielding less attraction between the positive ions and the delocalized electrons so going down group one lithium sodium potassium the melting point is actually decreasing not increasing okay he wants aluminium silicon phosphorus where's aluminium silicon phosphorus we said as we go aluminium silicon phosphorus well, aluminium, silicon increase and then there is a decrease to phosphorus because phosphorus is a simple molecular structure. So, no, that's not the one we want. What if we're looking at sodium, magnesium, aluminium? Well, looking at sodium, magnesium, aluminium, we said these are all metals and there is increasing number of delocalized electrons. So, there is a, a gradual rise in melting temperature so this is the one in which there is increasing melting temperature what about sulfur chlorine and argon if you look at sulfur chlorine and argon all of these we said are simple molecules so they have low melting temperatures so your answer here is c and that's the end of this uh, video i hope this was useful and clear to you uh, thank you for listening and please continue listening to these videos. Thank you.